Hello, good afternoon. So, first of all, thank you for Rubicon Italian for give me this opportunity to talk here. So, today I would like to talk about security issues on your Python, oh sorry, on your Ruby code. <laughs> and let me introduce myself, I'm Harley Davidson, it sounds weird. It sounds like the motorbike. And and I'm working as I'm working as security program manager for application security firm, Singapore-based. But I'm working for uh, Jakarta region. It's called Vantage Point Security. So I manage how the client rolling out the application security program end to end, from the requirement design development and until to the deployment. So, I uh, coming from Jakarta, Indonesia. You can reach out to me at Twitter at Harley David Car One. No wonder it's hard for me to use Harley Davidson in the Twitter account because it's already used. And today's I'm gonna tell a story about the finding security issue on development stage using open source static application security testing. Is there anyone familiar about the term? So is there anyone coming from the security background? Yeah, we have one there. Okay, so I'm gonna talk the, about the static application security testing in the back. So the goal is the developer can identify security issues on earlier stage without waiting for application through penetration testing. Is there anyone knows or ever heard about penetration testing? Yeah, a lot. So penetration testing is a stage where we literally hack our application to measure to find whether the apps contain security issues or not. And this is about the a common development process. The common development process starts from the requirement, design, development, testing, and UAT, and after that, going through the production stage. Ideally, the, in every stage of a development stage, ideally, there must be security, uh, security touch point involved in every stage of a development stage. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier about the penetration testing, if we take a look on this picture, penetration testing is taking part in the end of the development stage. Means we need to waiting for the application being created before we doing some security assessment. Meanwhile, security issues can could be created on the earlier stage, such as on design, phase and development phase as well. And what happened if we only put security assessment on the final stage? After we found the security issues, we need to roll back the process coming through from the requirement, doing some design and develop again. And after we fixing for the first time, there is no security issue there and there is no security measurement. And again, on the final stage, we're doing penetration testing, and then we found the security issue, and then it's coming back to the first stage. So it's kind of like circle loop of the remediation cycle. There is a research or fact which said that the comparison of cost, cost to fix security issue based on time of detection. So, it say the 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 research coming from NIST. So NIST said that if we found the penetrate the security issues on the acceptance testing, it will be 15, 50 much fifteen much uh, expensive rather than if we found immediately on the earlier stage. So it's for the management point of view perspective. It will be costly higher 
if we put security assessment in the final of stage of development because uh, we need to spend more budget to redevelop, to redesign, and fix all of the stuff. And I was mentioned about security issues. So in my opinion, or in some of literature said that security issues uh, coming from two different kind. The first of one, the coming from the design flows. Design flows like um, there is no RBRC implementation. Like let's say the, the regular employee able to invoke the supervisor function in the application, something like that. And the other one is coming from the coding box. So today we 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 gonna talk more deep about the coding box. Not really deep actually. So SQL injection is one of them. Any familiar about SQL injection? Yeah. So I quote from the internet that SQL injection is web application vulnerability that occurs when untrusted data is inserted in a SQL query without any sanitation or escaping. So this is how it looks. If this particular line of code invoke with name FFF, the resulting query will be like this one. But if it's set to double quote, single quote, or one equal one, single quote one, this, the query will be like this one. The tag is the successful inclusion of an OR operator which help us return all the records from the database. And this is how SQL injection can be fixed. SQL injection is not possible when using the above because the first element of the array is a template and the letters are parameters to the template. And for the second one, it can be used for the fixing SQL injection as well. So maybe I can show a little bit demo of SQL injection itself. So regardless what regardless to the programming language, I take I clone this uh, sample project from GitLab. It's coming from Jason. Jason something. Thank you for him to make these simple apps. So it's basically let's pretend it's a online store when we can search for something like water maybe we can type juice what if we put It will dump the database, the username, and the has password of it. Yeah, it's, I hope this kind of demo can give us uh, more visibility to, to understand what is the SQL injection. Let's get back to the slide. Where's the slide? This one. And then what else besides SQL injection, there's a lot of which we can consider as a security issue. And for you guys, if you like deep more about the security issue, I would, I would like to recommend you to visit the OAPS pages. So OAPS 
OEPS it stands for Open Web Application Security Project. This is non-profit organization. Annually, they they make a ten most critical web application security risks for each year. So let's say I take a sample. This is the top ten security issue at the 2017. So because previously we only talk about the SQL injection. So uh, OAPS itself categorized it's into several category like injection, broken authentication, and etc. Uh, you can find it by yourself at owasp.org. And how to make sure the code doesn't contain security coding bugs. So this is for the developers. So the mostly of the developers, they don't think carefully about how to writing secure code. Is there any of you who has a secure developer courses or secure development program? No? Nope. If that's the case, I hope uh, this topic will much easier help for you guys. And so how the developer can able to identify whether uh, he writing the code securely or not. There is a tool called static application security testing or commonly known as SAS. So S is designed to analyze source code and our compiled version of code to help find security flows. In this case, the flows which caused by coding bugs. Since today we are in Ruby conference, so there is a tool for SAS. It's open source tool. It's called with Brackman. Is anyone use Brackman before? So I think it should be enough because everyone's no breakman, so there is no point for me to continue the speech, right? So uh, it's open source tools. You, uh, we can use it for scan the Ruby on Rails application. It's statically analyzed Rails application code to find security issues. We can find it on the github.com slash president beef slash breakman. So Brickman installation itself, it's not quite hard. We can install using Ruby gems, using Bundler, or we can use the Docker version as well. And for the compatibility, Brickman should work with any version rails from 2.3 to 5. Point something. Brickman can analyze code written with Ruby 1.8 syntax and newer, but requires at least Ruby 2.3.0 to run. And Brickman itself has several capability to find security issue on the coding box level, such as cross-site scripting, SQL injection, command injection, cross-site request forgery, and many more. And Brickman output format, it can be CSV, JSON, text, HTML. We can choose our preferences, whichever we want. And Brickman itself able to integrate with Jenkins. So if you guys using Jenkins for the CI CD orchestrator, we can integrate the Brickman into the CI CD pipeline as well. Uh, because, uh, because the Brickman has it. It's a plugin for Jenkins. And maybe I can show you a quick demo about the Brackman usage. Oh. 
sorry. So, I cloned some Rails project. It's called with Rails Good. So it's kind of like vulnerable apps for based on Ruby on Rails. Uh, this is the Rails goals, Rails Good project looks like. And for using Breakman, we can simply using this command. Man. It's simple as Brackman and the project root. And we can type enter. She'll be working. And the result will coming through. And for a better for a better user interface, we can convert it to certain file like I mentioned earlier to HTML. Maybe it's better if we so HTML. So this is how the Breakman report looks like in HTML format. So first, it's, it tells us the application path, which already being scanned. This is the path. And it tells us the information about the Rails version and the Breakman itself version. And it tells us what is being checked from Breakman. So we can see it's checked for basic authentication, JSON parsing, SQL. XSS and etc. So if you take a look on here, it's coming with the warning type. Warning type it's represent how many security issues which found on the on the application. It's already categorized based on this uh, category: common injection, cross site request forgery. SQL injection and etc. So, in the next table, it tell us about the about the class, about the class dashboard controller, the method, and then the warning type. Let's say for the SQL injection, and it's coming with the code snip as well. For this one, we take a look for the SQL injection. And it tell us uh, exactly the line number, which potentially contains SQL injection. Yep, and it provide us the link for the for the, for the further info. If we click on the link, it will direct to the Breakman site, and what and will tell us what is SQL injection and give us the suggestion how to fix it. Mm, I think that's a quick demo for the Brackman. Maybe for the next, uh, there's a bundler audit. This is for 
this is used for uh, checking for the operation of games in game file log. We can clone from github.com, rubysec, bundler audit. So maybe I show you the quick demo. So the command is as simple as that, like just bundle hyphen audit. And the result will come, it will tell us the the, the Rails got application is using Nokogiri dependencies using version 1.10.2. And it has security issues with the high critical, and it's already listed on the vulnerable database library with CVE 2019-5477. And this is the URLs, and this is the title. So this is the solution to upgrade from this version to this version to avoid the security issue. And as simple as that. And then what else do we have? I think that's all that I have. So just for the disclaimer, I am not a Ruby expert. I'm not kind of like hands-on guys on the Ruby, but I'm still learning Ruby. So if you have any question regarding to this, please don't hit me with the hard one. I think thank you. Okay, we do have one question here, which is, uh, what are the most common security issues you see which Rails doesn't cover by default and Breakman doesn't catch? Mm, so, basically for for figure out the security issues, it depends on the on the tools on the on the capability of tools itself. If we if we are talk about if we are talk about the the security issue, which caused by caused by the coding bugs, right? So coding bugs mean we write the code, right? So if the question what is the what is the security issue which not discover or not no, we're not uh, exposed by the the hardest one. The I uh, to be honest, I can't answer that kind of question, Cody. But my 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 answer is it depends back on the tool. So as long as the tool has the capability, has the set rule to identify the certain bugs, it's always it always catch by the tools. So, okay. Okay. So, I I hope this might that might help. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, because the tools itself working based on the rule set. So, for the example, for the SQL injection or the another common security issue, the tools has the capability because it it register the set the rule set to identify those vulnerability. So, if one day the new vulnerability uh, occur, and and the, for the current tools, it's not update the rule set. It's high probability that the tools could not identify the issue by itself. Okay, thank you very much to Harley Davidson. Thank you.